Well, that was a totally different result than what I was expecting. Um, I was sort of expecting to We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. I got something in the mail today. D's nut. These new sanding discs from 3M. Let's check them out. These are the new 3M Extract Cubitron 2 abrasive sanding discs. I hope I got the name right. If you're not familiar, there is a newer technology for sanding discs, which is a metal mesh. They look like this. You've got the Velcro backing here, uh, which that's a brand name, but hook and loop pattern, I guess, is the uh, technical term. And uh, it's just a metal woven fiber that's scratchy. And the sharp metal pieces of the fiber spin, and that metal cuts into the wood with your random orbit sander, and that's how it sands. Last week, Jonathan J. Moses put out a video on these new, well, it was a lot of sanding discs, but basically the clear winner of his little competition, I'll link that video somewhere up here and also in the description. You need to go watch it. It was amazing. He did an incredibly thorough job sanding different types of sanding discs and accounting for a lot of the variables that happen in sanding. So today, this is gonna be my very unscientific, subjective test here in the shop. Um, I got these in 220. It was the only thing left in stock. The rest of you guys bought them all. So I've got a real world test. We're gonna compare these to the Merca Arbonet sanding discs that we normally use. Um, it was one of the ones he used in his comparison. And yeah, we're just gonna see how they hold up, see if I can notice any appreciable difference in the sanding time, uh, just sort of how it feels, and uh, overall performance. This is a real world test. That's enough about sanding. Here's what we're gonna do. Every so often in our cutting and charcuterie board business, we get boards that have a bad engraving on them for whatever reason. These two boards, which I conveniently have uh, bad engravings on. We're gonna run them through the drum sander and that's gonna leave really streaky sand lines. I'll show you. Um, but that's what we struggle with the most in sanding. It's the most labor intensive thing that we do for these cutting boards to get them back to normal. So the faster I can sand these and get them smooth, you know, the less money we're wasting in labor to get these out the door to the customer. So this will be a really good test of whether or not there's an appreciable difference between the Arbonet pads and these new 3M pads. Again, totally unscientific. It just works for us and our shop, but you can triangulate your needs based off of this. So this is gonna be a really good test. We've still got some burn marks on here. Some chamfers are not perfectly straight. So this will be a really good test of what we normally use 220 grit to get rid of. I'll do one with the Arbonet discs and I'll do another with the new 3M discs. And I'm gonna be using the same sander. All right, so I've marked these with pencil just so I'll have some sort of objective-ish measure to know when I'm done. Uh, the goal is to get the scratches out from the drum sander, but I think if we get rid of the pencil marks, it'll take care of that too. I'm just gonna start a stopwatch on my phone and, and there's obviously gonna be some bias here. Like I know which sanding pad is on the sander, so I'm gonna try to be going faster with the one that I want to win. So just know that going into it. This is not scientific at all. Well, I just reset it by accident, but it took one minute and seven seconds. 
to say it with the Merca Arbonette. That was a lot faster than I was expecting, but if there's anything I took away from uh, Katsmos' video is that I need to be changing sanding discs a lot more. Even though I have the really nice ones, even though they're really sharp and they cut well, I need to be changing them out after five to 10 minutes of use. I'm holding on to them for way too long. So now we're just gonna switch and do the new 3M extract. One thing I was not expecting, in his video he didn't really go into it, but it's got this chevron pattern. The purple bits are the sanding part. The open bits are the, uh, I don't know, the little white arrows, but the purple part is the part that sands. It's sort of backwards from what I was expecting. Anyway. Oh wow, okay, so surprising result. That one took uh, a minute and 26 seconds, and it took a little longer because I noticed a couple things. Number one, the purple bits were coming off on the piece, and there's just a lot of purple flakes. I don't even know if you can see them on the camera, but just, you know, like, that you could just feel the grit on the board. Uh, the vacuum wasn't sucking that through the holes, or I don't know what it was. Um, it also did not get rid of the streaks as well as the other board. I don't know, there's just some streaks on the board, I don't know why. I was sort of expecting this to be the clear winner and it just wasn't. Uh, maybe I'm just not used to sanding with it, maybe if I had several hours on these discs I would sort of learn how they sand. It felt more stable, it didn't feel like it wanted to dance as much as um, the Arbonet paper. 12 seconds later. Well, literally less than 10 seconds with the Arbonet disc and I got rid of all the residual scratches on this board. These two boards were made at the same time. They were right next to each other on the pile, which means they were probably from the same piece of lumber. I don't know, again, this is not scientific. This was just my subjective test and so far it looks like I'm just gonna be sticking with the Arbonet discs because they're just, they just produce a, a cleaner result. There's no residue on there. Um, the Arbonet disc got the scratches out much better. I'll hold this up to a new one, but it looks like this purple stuff got destroyed pretty quickly. And it feels a lot smoother too, so I'm gonna compare that to a new Arbonet disc. Here's the old one, here's the new one. There's a little bit of a color difference, but they feel much more similar. Uh, they don't feel as smooth to the touch. Again, completely subjective. Did I mention this is not scientific? Well, that was a totally different result than what I was expecting. Um, I was sort of expecting to switch to these and throw out the old Arbonet discs. Um, and Jonathan J. Moses' video, I really like how he broke it down into cost per gram of material to remove. You know, from an efficiency standpoint, that sounds awesome. But, and I get it, this is totally subjective. I think that the finish you get, whether how smooth and even and consistent it is, um, not just whether or not it removes pencil marks, but does it actually get the scratches out, is far more important to me than you know actual cost per gram of material removed. I think that's an amazing way to compare sanding discs, but as far as a finished product, I don't know that that's the best metric. These are not head and shoulders above these guys as far as utility goes. Maybe cost per gram, they're head and shoulders ahead of everybody else, but as far as usability and finished product, I'm gonna stick with what we already use. Even if I'm losing a little bit of money, I won't be losing sleep and I won't be losing time worrying about the finish and removing scratches and inspecting the workpiece. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts and opinions. I hope I've tried to make it clear that this is not a scientific test. This is a very subjective test, which is what I wanted to test. Do I notice a subjective difference between these two sanding discs? And I do. As a matter of fact, I prefer the old ones. Whether that's because I'm used to it or not, that's for you to decide. But uh, at least for the finished product that we use in our shop, I think we're gonna be sticking with the Merca discs. Let me know, have you tried these? Have you, have you tried ordering some? I know they're mostly sold out. The only ones I could get were in 220. I'm gonna be giving away these discs in the stud stack. So um, if you've been thinking about signing up, here's another giveaway opportunity. Uh, we're always trying to add value to the group there. So um, if anybody in the stud stack wants to try them, um, I'm gonna be giving them away over there. So let me know. If you wanna sign up for the stud stack, there's a link in the description. I also wanna say that there's absolutely nothing wrong with these discs. Both boards turned out just fine. They're gonna go back in the pile. We're still gonna ship them to customers. They're up to standards. It's just, I was just expecting the new 3M disc to 
not have some of the characteristics that it had. Most notably, the wear, the residue that it leaves on the board, and the fact that it just didn't get scratches out as well. And again, this is for our shop with our tools for our process on our product. So maybe your product is different. I don't know. Use this example to triangulate your decision off of. Especially as these get more popular because they're a newcomer and they're a new brand and people like chevrons and all the sales and marketing stuff that goes along with that. These are going to start to increase in price. So I don't even know that for very long they're going to be the best cost per gram of material removal. Um, but I'm just going to stick with these. Ask me how I do it. I just stick to the plan.